Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to do uh, my very own USA JMO slash USAMO practice test, problem number two. So, without further ado, let's begin by, of course, drawing your diagram, since this is a geometry problem. Let th uh, gamma be the circumcircle to ABC. So, when drawing a diagram, of course, always draw the circumcircle first, because it's much harder to draw the circumcircle of a given triangle than uh, drawing the triangle in a circumcircle. So we have a circle gamma with vertices A, B, C of a triangle. And let D be the antipode of A with, res with respect to uh, gamma. So for those of you who don't know, the antipode of a point with respect to a circle is the point that's opposite, that's diametrically opposite to the point you want to take the antipode of with respect to a circle. So in this case, if you want D to be the antipode of A with respect to gamma, you take A and find the point diametrically opposite. So if you fall along here, this would be D. And now we have a line L parallel to BC. So let's draw that L. And uh, passes through gamma at E and F, such that B, E, C, F lie on F gamma in that order, so something like this. B, E, C, F lie in this order. Uh, now we take P to be the intersection of B, D with A, E. So A, E continue on, B, D continue on, intersect right here, and uh, Q be the, whoops, Q be the intersection of C, D with A, F. So A, F continues and CD continues like so. And this is Q. And finally, let X be the intersection of CP with BQ. Okay, so I'll draw this in a slightly different color because it's important. CP with BQ, like this. And this is X. And we want to prove that AX is perpendicular to BC. So this line is perpendicular to BC, is what we want to prove. So at first, this problem looks kind of complicated since there's so many intersections. For example, P is the definition to an intersection, Q is the definition of an intersection, and like X is also the definition to an intersection. So how should we go about solving this? Well, first we can uh, try making some observations to make our jobs a little bit simpler and finding some sort of relation between all these points. So first of all, let's look at what D is. D is the antipode of A, so the diametrically opposite point. And what do we know about angles that subtend a like a uh, half of a circle? For example, in uh, this arc, in this arc, A, C, D, this angle subtends exactly half the circle. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us angle A, C, D, angle A, C, D equals 90 degrees. And this is just basic circle properties. And similarly, we can find that angle B, A, uh, A B, D, is also equal to 9 degrees. Okay, so that's nice. Well, similarly, since ACD is equal to 9 degrees and DCQ is on a line, ACQ is equal to 9 degrees. So ACQ is equal to 90 degrees. And similarly, ABP is equal to 90 degrees. So we know that ACQ and ABP are right triangles. So I will mark it as shown. like this. Okay, so now what else do we know? Well, we also know that EF is parallel to BC. So EF is parallel to BC. And uh, what does that tell us? Well, any two parallel lines that intersect a circle, it implies that... It Im Whoa, what just happened there? It implies that the arc EB, or arc BE, I should say, 
because ordering things in alphabetical order is good is equal to arc CF. So, okay, but now we note that BE, arc BE, is subtended by angle EAB. So, in fact, this is equal to twice of angle EAB, so, and so is CF compared to angle FAC. So we know that angle BAE bay is equal to angle CAF. So now we know these two angles are equal. So that's pretty nice. And now, in order to solve the rest of the problem, I will use something called Jacobi's theorem. Jacobi's theorem states that in a triangle ABC, if we pick X, Y, and Z such that the marked angles are equal, so this one and this one, this one and this one, and this one and this one are equal, then we have that AX, BY, and CZ are concurrent. So let's see how we might use this theorem in our problem right now. So we see that we have triangle ABC. And in addition, we have uh, triangle PBA and triangle CAQ. So it seems like we might want to do Jacobi's theorem, especially because BQ, C, and CP are drawn, which is equivalent to the BY and CZ in this Jacobi's theorem diagram. So all we need to do is find out what the last triangle is, and perhaps we can use Jacobi's theorem. So we see that in the last triangle that's uh, connected to side BC, that since angle PBA is 90 degrees, we want this angle of this last triangle to be 90 degrees. In addition, we see that angle ACQ is 90 degrees, so we want this angle of the triangle to be 90 degrees. But that's strange. If the two triangles, if the two angles of triangle are both 90 degrees, then how is this even a triangle? In order to resolve this, we'll define something called a point at infinity. To get kind of get behind the idea of this, let's just consider some lines. If we have two lines and they're not parallel, they intersect at a point. And if they're not parallel, this is always true. Any two lines that are not parallel will always intersect at a point. So why is the parallel line case so special? Why don't they intersect at a point? It seems like a sort of unfortunate exception to this rule that seemingly applies to all other lines. So in order to get past this, we'll define a point at infinity parallel, parallel to a set of lines to be the point here. If we keep on going, the point at infinity is defined to be the intersection of these two parallel lines. So in fact, all lines that are parallel to this one line, they all intersect at this point infinity parallel to this line. Of course, if we have another line that isn't parallel, and a bunch of those parallel lines, then they will intersect at another point at infinity that is defined as parallel to these lines. So in this way, we can avoid this seemingly uh, exception for parallel lines that they seemingly don't intersect while all other lines do intersect. So we can use the same thing here. We'll define the point at infinity that is parallel to these two lines. So this means that our last triangle is in fact triangle B, C, point at infinity. So now we have our three triangles. Of course, we have triangle ABP, ABP, we have triangle ACQ, and finally we have triangle BC point at infinity. So now let's see what happens when we apply Jacobi's theorem. Well, we have that CP and BQ are two of the lines, which was this one and this one, but what's AX? Well, if we connect A with a point at infinity parallel to these lines, then in fact what we get is another line that's parallel with both of these lines. So we get a line that's parallel with 
both of these lines. So these are parallel, and so is this. Because remember that all parallel lines in this direction all intersect at this point at infinity. However, we also know that these, th these parallel lines are all perpendicular to BC. So that means this parallel line through A is also perpendicular to BC. So now Jacobi's theorem states that the height from A onto BC and the, the uh, CP and BQ, they all intersect at one point. However, note that we're exactly trying to prove that AX is perpendicular to BC, and since uh, CP and BQ intersect at X as well as the perpendicular from A to BC, this proves that AX is in fact perpendicular to BC, so we are done. Uh, so this week we're going to be doing uh, question number one from Daniel's USAMO practice test that he made.